Hi, welcome along to this video where we're going to be talking about uh, chapter four in the S1 workbook, uh, discrete random variables. So let's have a look. Uh, the first thing, construct a probability distribution table relating to a given situation involving a discrete random variable x and calculate E of x and var of x, that stands for variance of x. Alright, uh, secondly, use formula for probabilities for the binomial distribution and recognize practical situations where the binomial distribution is a suitable model, and there's some notation there, and use the formula for the expectation and variance of the binomial distribution, that's a very quick one. So we're going to be looking in this video at the first bullet point here about probability distributions and what a discrete random variable is. If you look at these first examples that I have here, these are variables that you're used to seeing in algebra. 2x equals 6 is a variable that has one solution, the value of 3. The second one, 4 minus x equals 1, once again, value of 3 makes that uh, variable true in that equation. And the third one there is a quadratic equation which may have two values of x that make the equation true. Um, when we're dealing with discrete random variables, we're talking about something a little bit different. A, a discrete or a random variable in probability is a variable that changes depending on the outcome of an experiment. So we use capital letters to represent a random variable x and small letters for the possible outcomes of that random variable. They can be discrete or continuous. Okay, So this chapter here we're going to be talking about discrete random variables. So let's have a look at some examples of discrete random variables. So let's start with a situation where we roll a die, a six-sided die, 60 times and we record the number of ones, twos. We might get something like this. I mean, you'd expect that each one would be the same, but of course, in, in practice, you're going to get varying numbers. Uh, in this case, less fives and more ones. Uh, if we talk about what we might expect to happen, in other words, a model of what would happen, then you would get something like this, okay? Um, X representing the possible outcomes, so anything from one to six, and the probability of getting each one of those outcomes. So the probability, this random variable X, which is the number on the die, is equal to that particular outcome. Now you'd expect that one-sixth of the time you would get each one of those numbers. What you see there is a probability distribution. Notice that the probabilities all add up to one, and that's the one defining thing about a probability distribution is these probabilities must add up to one. There are three ways that we can define a probability distribution. A rule, so some kind of algebraic formula, you're going to see one of those uh, problems soon. A graph, I could give you a graph and you can see the probabilities of each of the different outcomes and by far the most common you're going to see is a table like this that shows the different outcomes and it shows the probabilities associated with each outcome. Note again, the probabilities down here must add up to one. Let's look at a few examples of uh, probability distributions. The number of heads when I toss a coin twice. Alright, so I could use a probability tree to work out this probability distribution, we can either get 0, 1 or 2 heads. Probability of getting 0 heads is this row down here. Probability of getting 2 tails, 0.25. Probability of getting 2 heads is this up here, 0.25. So the chance of getting 1 head is 0.5. There's the probability distribution. The number of girls in a family of 3 children. A bit more involved probability tree here. Uh, we can either get 0, 1, 2, or 3 girls. And you can see each of the branches is equally likely, so we could just count up the outcomes at the end. The number of branches with no girls is one of them, 1 out of 8. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.125. The number of, or uh, well, the probability of getting a family with 3 girls is the same. Girl, 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 0 0.125 or 1 8. The chance of getting a family with 1 girl, I can see that there's 3 outcomes show me one girl, so one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, three eighths, and three eighths the probability of getting two girls. The third one here, when we roll two dice, looking at the difference between the two numbers. So here's the sample space that we're going to use to calculate the probabilities. Remember in this case we're looking at the difference, so if I roll a 
5 and a 5, the difference is 0. If I roll a 4 and a 5, the difference is 1. It doesn't matter what the order is, we're talking about the difference between the two dice. So here's our sample space. I can then calculate the probability of getting a difference of 0. I can see that there's 6 out of the 36 outcomes with a difference of 0. So 6 out of 36, or 1 6 simplified. And the rest of the probabilities just come from adding up the different numbers in the table. Here's another example of a discrete random variable. Same uh, kind of situation, we've got some dice here, we're going to throw two of them and our random variable is the number of sixes that we get when we roll two dice. Alright, so we're going to have to work out some probabilities here to fill in this probability distribution table. First of all, it's important to recognize how many sixes could you get when you roll two dice. So that's either no sixes, one six, or two six. Let's work out uh, what the probabilities are now. The probability that we get no sixes. Okay, oh well. That means that we could get any one of the five different numbers on the first roll and any one of the five numbers from one to five in the second roll. So the probability is 25 over 36. The probability that we get one six means we get a, not a six, then a six, or, so we're adding the probability as soon as I say or, we get a six on the first dice, then not a six on the second. So there's the calculation for that, showing the chance of not getting a six on the first roll, followed by the chance of getting a six on the second roll, or getting a six on the first and not on the second. That's 10 over 36. All right, so without even having to work out the chance of getting two sixes, I can see that the probabilities of getting none or one add up to 35 out of 36. I know that the probabilities have got to add to one, so I know that the last probability is going to be one minus those two, which is one out of 36. So probably x equals two though, let's do the calculation. The probability both dice give us a six. Like I said, is one over 36. So now we just need to put that into a table. And there it is. That is the probability distribution for x, the random variable, the number of sixes we get when we roll two dice. Here's an example that's just a little bit different. Here I'm giving you a formula for the probability distribution of this discrete random variable. And it's tricky. This is, this is based on an exam question from a few years ago. I'm giving you a formula for this random variable about the value it takes and the probability that it takes for that particular value. So we've kind of got a connection between our, our values of x for the random variable and this, this value of r, which uh, takes all integer values from 1 to 4 inclusive. So r could be 1, 2, 3, or 4. All right, so it's a little bit tricky. So the first one, show that the probability x equals 3 is 2 fifths. OK. Well, the discrete random variable takes the value 12 over r. So when our discrete random variable has a value of 3, we're trying to find, well, what's the value of r for that particular value? So let's, let's have a look at that. So to find the value of r here, we know 12 over r is going to be 3, so r is equal to 4. And the question tells us that the probability, if we look up here again, the probability is r over 10. So in this case, 4 over 10, which is 2 fifths. So the first bit's pr proven. If we just go through now all the values of r, we can see what our different values of x are and what the probabilities associated with those values are. So here's the probability distribution. We've got four values of r. We've just done uh, this one here. When r is 4, our x value is 3, giving us a probability of 2 fifths. When r is 3, our x value is 12 over 3, which is 4, and the probability is r over 10, so 3 over 10, etc., etc. Now, if we put those in order for the x values, you can see here we go 12, 6, 4, 3. If we just write them around the, in ascending order, we get that probability distribution.